And let's see what we've got inside. Might be interesting to watch, might not be. So. So I'm going to be replacing this Perk 6i with a H200 um, and the cables of course because these are proprietary for this particular card. What I might do is I might put this in my my other uh, server machine as a bit of a, a muck around and uh, yeah, use this as a RAID array card and then I can use the H200 in here. So uh, this riser board is a X8 on the bottom and then two X4s or by4s on the top. Even though it's uh, a by8 slot. Okay, interesting. And this riser is a little bit more interesting as it's just got the two by eight slots and also the intruder switch. Um, I've seen videos of people modifying these slots I and mean, taking the ends of them out um, or opening them up so you can put a by 16 card in there like a, a GPU or something um, or if you don't fancy doing that you can get a replacement riser board which just is by 16 to by 16 however for some reason the by 16 slot is on the top um, which doesn't make it entirely useful for choosing a graphics card because these PCI slots are the other way around you know, or upside down in, than they are in conventional desktop cases so you'll have the fans on a graphics card pointing upwards so you and because the by 16 slot is at the top you can only have a single slot graphics card which is rather annoying um, it's a shame because if it didn't have the intrusion switch or some of the other features on here, uh, I think it's just the intrusion, intrusion switch, um, you could easily um, get a PCI riser cable and put in a two slot height card in here and uh, yeah that would be much better. But yeah, maybe there's a way around this. Um, but we'll see. If I can find a way around it I will because I would like to get a graphics card in here to do some video transcoding for a Plex server so I can shove all my DVDs onto here as well and then just stream them to my living room instead of having to faff around with a 101 DVDs in a case. Maybe we'll see if we can find a used uh, Quadro card or something for that. So that's the backup battery for the RAID. Um, won't be needing that anymore, so that can come out and stay with the card. And these SAS cables just uh, unplug quite nicely. So we won't be needing these again either because the H200 uses the same, uh, this mini SAS. I've forgotten what it's actually called, but it's this connector on both ends rather than this narrow and wide one. One thing I do like about this is how easy it is to take the heat sinks off. Um, there's no faffing around with screws and back plates behind the motherboard. Just undo these two levers, give it a wheel, and there you are. And <laughs> yeah, that definitely needed to come off. 
That thermal paste does not look happy. Let's get a close up on that. It's still a bit tacky, but that does not look pretty. Um, we'll definitely replace that. <laughs> Same story on this one, I think. it's. Um, it looks like it hasn't got enough thermal compound and whatever it was on there. Uh, yeah, the, the silicon and the other things in it have separated and it doesn't look too happy. But, uh, yeah. There's a fair chunk of a passive cooler, that. For anyone worried about static, my workbench underneath is metal and it's earthed. So that's the iDRAC interface port, and I think you can load data onto this with an SD card this way, as well as having its own dedicated um, RJ45 port for the web interface diagnostics. You can run it through the integrated NIC on the back here, but I think I've, because I've got a switch now, I'm going to uh, run a dedicated line into this. Go the barbarian route. <laughs> I'm hoping, like with everything in a computer, it shouldn't be too tight. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. There we are. Just as I thought. Right, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a bit of Sharpie on the board next to where each of these pins go so I get it right when I put it all back together. Uh, <laughs> I suppose it does help to actually look at the manual for removing it inside of the lid. <laughs> so pull that up. Oops. And slide the tray forward. There we go. That makes a lot of sense. So now the motherboard comes out on its tray. I didn't actually need to undo any of those screws to get the motherboard out, but I want to make sure there's nothing trapped in between the motherboard and this backing plate, so I'm going to try and take that off as well. Okay, so what I found was I had to do the thing I didn't really want to do. I had to remove these uh, socket cages <laughs> as they were screwed into the back uh, metal board underneath instead of just having like a backing plate. 
uh, on it like consumer motherboards have. Um, I didn't want to take them off because I, I didn't really want to disturb the chips too much because they are pin grid arrays but just doing it carefully and slowly and releasing the lever on the socket frame before you start unscrewing it made things a lot easier but now it just uh, comes out so lift it up to this end and sort of carefully slide it forward because it is um, retained with a little finger at this end and yeah, there we go and voila unfortunately I don't have any of those plastic socket covers so to have a good inspect of the underside I'm just going to very carefully take these out and yeah, they've still got the marks so and of course it's not going to let me get at them so there's one find something nice to put this down on with the light down on there moving my head around I can see all the pins are straight uh, there aren't any missing or out of line so I'm happy with that I'm going to take extra care now not to put my hands anywhere near them so I just want to have a look on the underside of this system board so, here we go and I th don't know how well you can see this but let's get the light off no, <laughs> doesn't really help. Um, there are some areas around the board. To me, it looks like water damage, but it just might be where the the foam has leached some chemicals onto the board. So what I'm going to do whilst I've got it in this state, I'm going to clean the bottom side of the board and then put it back onto the motherboard tray. And I'm going to do that off camera because I know if I do it whilst recording myself, I will mess something up, and I'll have scrapped a system motherboard whilst I had these off I actually took the chance to uh, clean them up um, so I've got most of the old thermal compound off them Now I don't have any alcohol or a silicon based compound remover so I'm using automotive body panel wipe which is a fast evaporating uh, fluid it doesn't leave any residues behind it's used in the car paint industry to leave a pristine and oil and gunk free surface ready for paint because uh, obviously you want paint to stick, so this stuff works a treat. So there we are. You can see that, probably see that in the light just evaporating now. Now I'm just going to put all the standoff posts and the screws back in, which for just moving, removing the motherboard with the tray, I didn't need to do now in hindsight. 
but for what I wanted to do and get in between the PCB and the tray itself to clean out some of the other gunk um, that was absolutely needed and I managed to uh, get off the spill out of the thermal compound that was on around these The last thing to do now is just to get our SAS backplane out of the way and our hard drives out of the way. Uh, and then this is pretty much all open now and I can start dusting it out. I am very fond of how modular everything is in this server. Mmm, gross tea. Okay, so for this last board, the uh, front panel connector board, uh, this one had a screw just there, just below the L of the Dell, and that released it, uh, along with all the fluff. So yeah, I'm glad I got that out. And then to give the bays and sort of front section the area where all the air gets drawn in, and uh, along with all the dust and crap, I wanted to remove the front bezel. Uh, that was a load of little um, T8 um, countersunk screws, uh, some on the bottom as well. But also it was uh, riveted in on the side, so I've just had to drill those out as well. And then it was all free to come out. Uh, as you can see, more dust, more crap, <laughs> more of everything. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad I got that off. It's been a bit picky, but I've enjoyed taking it apart and seeing how it's all put together. And there we are. Uh, I'm not going to take it apart anymore, any further than this, because uh, it's all riveted together now. So, uh, I, And I can get at it fairly well. So I'm going to completely clean it all down, put it back together, and then I will see you in the next video, where we'll put in that H200 card and start setting up FreeNAS. Or true nerd.